Hi, everybody. This is Scott Myers. Hello, everybody. A past student and now a captain. So I'm going to let you tell him tell you a little bit about what he does, what he's up to next, and how he got there. Scott, the floor is yours. Fantastic. Well, congratulations, everybody, for picking the coolest job on the planet. Uh, I was a student at Gallatin College. I uh, went there for two years and then when I finished up at Gallatin College, I went on to be a client manager at Summit Aviation. Uh, did that for about eight or nine months and uh, couldn't stand being in the office while every, all my friends were flying airplanes. And so a buddy and I uh, went on a pilgrimage to Alaska. I figured if you want to be an actor, move to Hollywood. Well, I wanted to be a pilot, so go where the airplanes are. We went up to Anchorage, middle of the winter time, and just uh, started knocking down doors and handing out resumes and hoping for the best. And him and I got on with a small company called Alaska Central Express, flying 1900s as a uh, first officer for them. Worked hard there. It was tough. And hopefully through Heidi's course, you can learn how the aviation industry handles their, what we call an FOM, Flight Operations Manual, and then the AOM, Aircraft Operations Manual. Um, so you have thousands of pages of manual to learn, plus you have, um, you know, obviously stick and ready to learn how to fly the airplanes. I barely held on. Um, stayed with ACE for a year, got my feet into, you know, got myself into the aviation career and got to see what it was like to be a first officer and, and to be in the uh, and it was a 135 operation, but they handled it a lot like a 121 operation. So it was good to have that experience. Um, in a year with them, I got just over 1,100 hours, which put me over the 1250 I needed to go and get a restricted ATP at an airline. And so I skedaddled down to the lower 48. I interviewed at SkyWest Horizon and had one scheduled at um, Endeavor as well incredible, incredible opportunities, each one of them. SkyWest said, thank you, but no thank you. Horizon said, yes, please, as soon as possible. And then I never made it to the Endeavor interview. Um, listen to the gouges. When it comes to interviewing for an airline, this is, this, is, this is career type stuff. So you can't just show up and hope for the best. You gotta read the gouges online, ask as many questions as you can, go there prepared. I cannot, I cannot stress that enough, there are there are online programs, regional airlines, less important, but as you get into the major and the legacy airlines, some of the larger cargo carriers, uh, we'll talk about that in a bit, but you'll wanna be highly prepared. These are high paying jobs. These are amazing opportunities. Show your value, show your worth, show up prepared. Um, so I was able to land a position as a first officer with Horizon. I've been with Horizon just over three years or just shy of four years rather. Uh, there was a um, bit of a, a pilot shortage when I got started in, in 2017. And so it was all go, no quit with Horizon. I uh, was a first officer there for 18 months, upgraded to captain in January, December of 2018, January of uh, 2019. And then four months after that, they, uh, they must have saw something they liked because they put me in the simulator as a simulator instructor for them. And so now I've been a captain for almost two years, just about two years, and then a simulator instructor for about 18 months. Um, just before COVID hit, we were talking about what they call dual qual, which would have put me as a simulator instructor as well as a Czech airman where I could do both. And it was just a fantastic opportunity. However, that was a week before COVID hit. And so all of those operations have been shut down. So I'm just a, just a happy, happy little captain with... Uh, the occasional day in the simulator, it's, it's nothing too grueling. Um, and then in August of 2020, believe it or not, uh, I was invited to come and interview with uh, FedEx Express. And October 9th, I was offered a position with them as a, as a first officer. I don't know my equipment yet, and I don't know uh, where I'll be based just yet, but uh, I definitely am looking forward to starting in the beginning of March. Um, while I have you, I wanna talk a little bit about what's important to you. So that's been my progress. Um, how I've been able to attain all that, I'm gonna be really honest with you, really straightforward. It's mindset. Look, you guys are all in the same college together. You all have problems with instructors. You all have problems with flight schools. You all have problems with weather and maintenance. Welcome to aviation, you guys. Don't complain about it, deal with it. 
process it, figure out a way to let go of the, the angst and the anger about it and figure out a way to process it in a way that you're looking for the silver lining. You're looking for the benefit because I've far too many students I've talked to along the way complain about equipment failures and weather. Well, I'm sorry to break it to you. Welcome to your new life. And it is a part of it. So the, the, early, the sooner that you can mitigate those problems and understand that, that it is what it is, um, if the flight school that you're working with drives you nuts with the way they schedule and, and handle their instructors, welcome to the airline aviation industry. Holy crap. Do you think that every single captain I flew with as a first officer loved Horizon Air and loved the union you work with? No, we're pilots. We complain all the way through. What's most important, though, for you personally is your mindset. Get your mind right. Get, get to acceptance. Understand that this is what it is and move past it in a healthy way. Um, some issues you're not gonna wanna just overlook and go with the flow, but because it's, it affects safety or maintenance or the safety of, of your passengers. What I'm talking about is the emotional angst. Don't worry so much. Airplanes break, weather comes in, companies suck. All that stuff happens all the way through. I'm a captain, I'm a sim instructor. I love every single day of my life. Um, partly yes, because I get to fly airplanes for a living and, and look, they pay me an obscene amount of money and it's an easy job. It's tough to get here. You know that you're going through it now, but once you get here, it's as sweet as you think it's going to be. It's a little bit sweeter if you can accept the problems and mitigate and manage them. Um, so that's a little bit how you process through this journey. And look, think about if you were hiring somebody, do you want to hire somebody that's, that's going to complain and whine about all the problems? Or are you going to want to hire somebody that's passionate and energetic about the positivity in their life? Because honestly, um, for a guy that actually got to go to the top of the industry, walk in the halls that, that astronauts have walked with and, and get to sit down with these guys with, with energy and passion and positivity and, and be offered a position, I'm extremely grateful. I'm extremely humbled. I, um, I, I blame God because I know I couldn't do this myself. But to have gotten to that level in my career, I understand that my passion and my energy and my ability to take the good with the bad and move forward with positivity and passion is what has gotten me here so, so quickly. I graduated in, what was that? Be May of 2015. And I accepted a job with FedEx October of 2020. It's ridiculously fast. I can't take credit for it. Believe me, I'm humbled to get to be here. But if there's one thing I attribute my success, obviously God first, but number two is I love what I do and it shows love what you do and show it, you know, don't complain. Everybody, you know, everybody has problems. We get it. It's hard. I understand. I was there with you. Um, accept it, process it, but then really get into the passion of what it is to be an airline pilot because it is incredible. And my life is easy. It's uh um, it's tough to get here, like I said, but when you're in, when you're in the cockpit and you're flying these routes, um, it's incredible. It truly is. Why don't you tell, tell, uh, share with us some of the po more positive aspects of being in the position you're in right now. Um, first of all, first officers are way better than captains. <laughs> I, uh, absolutely loved being a first officer. It was great. But as a first officer, you have to kind of be a chameleon. Okay. You have to, you have to know how to ask questions and listen well and you have to know how to read a situation and and handle yourself in a professional way so that that the captain can feel supported um as a captain though this is the best part of my life the best part of my life is i set the tone for that aircraft that's my airplane that's my flight and i get to bring my energy and passion in into that cockpit and i get to design the 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 feel of that of that flight and of those couple of days um we get to travel all over the place and, and granted right now i work for a regional airline so we're talking about some markets in california and in the montanas and idaho and washington and so on and so forth but um you're in a new place a lot you get to experience a lot and it, as much as you want to if you want to get out and walk around and check stuff out you can if you want to hunker down in the hotel and watch netflix for 10 hours you can do that too um, the freedom though, is to have kind of a dual life. Um, at first it was a challenge. The first three weeks as an airline pilot, I was wondering if I could do this, right? Like you're living in hotels two weeks a month. 
and you think, oh God. And they're not, you know, it's a, it's a regional airline. So they're not like the nicest hotels. They're comfortable and, and they have what you need. But um, I tell you, after about a month of doing it, I really came to crave the, the freedom and the alone time. Uh, you have your life on the road, which is all yours. That's all yours. You, you design how you, you spend overnights at these locations and these markets. And then you have your home time. When, and when you're home, you're home. My favorite part about this industry is that you do not take your home, your work home with you. When I land an airplane, I can't go back and make sure that the landing was better or the turbulence was less or that your flight was more comfortable. When I land the airplane, my job is done. Um, I say goodbye to you. You get off my airplane. I walk out of there and straight up, you guys, I don't think about it again. <laughs> People ask me, well, where are you going next week? I don't know wherever they tell me. Um, I like too that I don't know what day of the week it is. Today, I, I mean, um, I'm pretty sure it's Wednesday. Is that right, Heidi? But I just yeah. don't know what day of the week it is. It doesn't matter to me. I know when it's the first day of the trip and I know when it's the last day of the trip. Um, our trips are broken out into one, two, three, or four day trips. And I start the first day, I work for four days and I go home. So really my schedule is pretty sweet. I'm three, four on, three, four off. Um, I can work in vacations pretty easy without even having to take vacation time because if you front load your month or back load your month, you bid for a schedule, which means you, you basically go into a lottery and you, you pick out what you like best and hope for the best. And sometimes you get good schedules and sometimes you don't, but, um, it's always, it's always something a little different and it's, uh, it's really neat to not have to take your work home with you. I will say that's probably the best part. So now I'm going to ask you about the flip side. What are some of the challenges of being in the position? Um, some of the hardest parts of what we do is mitigating passengers, mitigating fatigue, mitigating the challenges of the flight crew, um, working with a captain that you don't necessarily agree with, remaining professional when, when things turn sour. Um, ultimately, the safety of the passengers is most important. I don't go to work to be cool. I don't go to work to show off how good I am at flying an airplane. I go to work to get a, the people safely from A to B, and B, the equipment safely from A to B. And um, sometimes that comes with maintenance delays. Sometimes that comes with cranky captains. Sometimes that comes with, um, I've had passengers OD on my aircraft, drug overdose. I've had passengers vape in the seat, in the middle of the airplane, in the middle of the flight. Um, I've had unruly passengers. Um, I had a dog try to bite me, an emotional support golden lab that was like, 200 pounds, or it was like 120 pounds, but it tried to bite me as a first officer. I said that was enough was enough. Um, being away from home, you guys look, it, the reality is, is that I'm gone two weeks a month and there are parts that I miss. Sometimes I miss birthdays, sometimes I miss holidays, sometimes uh, you miss your life at home, um, but that's that's all part of taking the good with the bad. I, uh, I don't work for a living. I, I have it since I graduated Gallatin College. Um, I get to do what I love every single day and I wouldn't give it up for the world, but it, you know, where there's reward comes a little bit of pay and uh, I pay by having to be on the road so much. And if I want more money, I got to work more, which means I, if I work more, that means I'm away from home more. And so cherish that time at home. Um, <laughs> don't, don't be like me and spend it talking about airplanes, airplanes, airplanes. I swear to God, my poor family is tired of hearing about airplanes, but um, yeah, the downside is, being away but you know what um how much are you away if you're a, law a lawyer or a doctor though too you know when you're working 60 80 hours a week um how many dinners do you miss how many holidays do you miss so on and so forth so no matter what we do as white collar professionals um it takes some commitment and when i'm home that's our favorite part as a family when i'm home i'm home i, I don't have anything um working in the yard hanging with the kids playing basketball at the park doesn't matter i don't have anything that, that takes my time away from being home. So that's great. So what is one of the, a uh, couple of the attractions that brought you to moving over to FedEx? Um, I know every one of you guys are thinking, well, the paycheck, duh. Yeah, I'm gonna make an obscene amount of money. I personally had to take the paycheck off the table to make this decision. And um, you guys might think I'm insane, but here's what I'm talking about. So I do what I love every day. I go to work and I get to, I get to flirt with passengers and um, teach first officers and mentor people on success and spirituality. And I love my life every day. 
And then twice a month, I sit down at a computer and I transfer ones and zeros from one account to another. And uh, I don't even I don't even correlate the two together. My paycheck is separate of of what I do for a living. I've lived my passion and then I, I manage some ones and zeros. And so in order to go on to FedEx, I really had to take a look at that. And the best part about flying heavy aircraft and more than likely I'll, I'll fly heavy aircraft for FedEx. They only have one airframe that isn't. And that's the 757, which I mean, I'd happy to do it. It's just not the it's not the schedule that I'm looking for is time at home with my family. Um, it's more like two weeks on, two weeks off. And really the way it looks long term is two weeks on, two to eight weeks off because of the way that you can um, work your schedule in a heavy aircraft. Um, the reason that that is, you guys, is because when you work for aviation, it's based on duty time. And so when I get it, when I step on a 777 and I fly all the way around the world, my duty time is longer. And so you're able to knock out more duty in less days. And so that's why you only work 12, 15 days a month and make obscene money and then get to go home is because you're working less, more duty in less days. And that goes with all heavy, whether you're working heavies for Fed, for uh, Delta, United, or American. The only difference with the legacy carriers, and um, I certainly looked at United as well. The only difference with the with the legacy carriers is that you're probably going to start in narrow body stuff before you work up to the wide body stuff. And so with FedEx, I was able to start my career with wide body stuff and work. I'll, I'll work be able to work for FedEx for about 25 years. And so uh, I wanted wide body. That's what I really wanted. And of course. As it, it, if anybody's looked at airlinepilotcentral.com, and if you don't know that website, get into it, especially as an aviation professional. Uh, it, for all of you that have looked at um, airlinepilotcentral.com, um, FedEx is the highest paying airline in the world, as far as I understand. Now, in, in America, for sure, in the United States, because I think there might be some Asian carriers that are, or, and I don't know if Emirates is higher, but there might be some carriers that provide more because they're desperate. But um, consistently FedEx has been a top payer. And uh, as I've learned the company, they spared no expense for accommodations, training, so on and so forth. So um, flying heavies, time at home, and then of course, better accommodations when I'm gone. And then of course, come on, you guys, flying a 777 around the world doesn't sound like it sucks either. I, that's a big aircraft. I'm really excited for the adventure of it. And then once you bring you know, pay back to the table, uh, I'll be able to, to have a different lifestyle with my family. All right. Well, Scott, I really want to thank you. Um, past student, professional pilot, and motivational speaker. Apparently. <laughs> All right. Have a great day.